Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our series, Science in the Quran. The first question, of course, is why study the issue of science in the Quran? Or in other words, why should I spend time watching these videos? Well, that's a great question. Probably the best answer is that Muslims have always had an abiding and deep concern for the issues of science. And throughout this series, we'll try to understand why. In this lithograph of the Istanbul Observatory in the late 16th century, we see a moment in the heyday of Islamic sciences where Muslims were the leaders in astronomy. Today, we live in a very privileged time. Science has done amazing things. We have mapped inner space. We're working on mapping outer space. We have made remarkable discoveries that no one just a few hundred years ago would have believed. For example, we've discovered that the thousands or millions of substances are made up of atoms. We have come to understand heredity, and DNA. And in fact, recently, scientists have mapped the human genome. We have developed amazing theories like general relativity and quantum mechanics. We have managed to send people into space, and we have sent telescopes like the Hubble telescope into space. We have created particle accelerators that can accelerate particles and smash them together nearly at the speed of light. And so, in the last century, science, in fact, has more than doubled the amount of knowledge that humanity had accumulated from the dawn of prehistory until the beginning of the 20th century. Therefore, this gives us a very different window than our ancestors had to try to fulfill the Qur'anic mandate that is in Surah Al-Amran. So we see in verses 190 and 191, Verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of night and day, there are indeed signs for those endowed with insight. So in natural phenomena, we find signs of God's glory, His creative majesty. And the verse goes on to say, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Who are those endowed with insight that verse 190 talked about? They are those who remember God when they stand, when they sit, and when they lie down and reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth and come to the conclusion, Our Lord, Thou has not created this without meaning and purpose. Glory to Thee. Keep us safe from the suffering of the fire. So we actually find that scientific inquiry is a gateway to spirituality. And for those who speak Arabic, let me call your attention to this word right here, وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ The Qur'an, in the issue of pondering the creation of the heavens and the earth, doesn't say, وَيُفَكِّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ doesn't say they think about the creation of the heavens and the earth. It says, وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ That intensive form of the verb means they ponder deeply. They ponder with tremendous concentration and focus about the creation of the heavens and the earth. And it is that sort of focused acquisition of knowledge, thinking, contemplation, reflection, that leads to some enhancement in our spirituality. In fact, when we look at how Muslims study the issue of science in the Qur'an, 
most things I've come across are attempting to prove the authenticity of the Quran. We find a verse that makes a statement that could not possibly have been known to the people of Arabia of the 7th century. And that, in fact, is true. There are some such verses, and inshallah we will study them, and they are pretty amazing. But I would think that a better purpose, a bigger purpose, is to gain a deeper appreciation of all of the verses of the Qur'an that talk about creation and the natural world, whether they talk about cosmology or geology or biology or embryology, understanding something about the science in these areas will lead us to a much more profound appreciation of those verses. We'll be able to see them in a way very different than our ancestors could. A third and interesting facet of studying science in the Quran is that we as Muslims are really in a fairly unique position to provide an alternative relationship between religion and science than the one that predominantly exists today. It's of course no secret to anyone interested in this topic that that relationship is often perceived by both camps, religion and science, as antagonistic. So John Maddox, the editor of Nature, in an article titled Defending Science Against Anti-Science, said that, quote, it may not be long before the practice of religion must be regarded as anti-science. And this view has been fueled by such incidents as when the Kansas State Board of Education decided to de-emphasize topics such as evolution, the geologic time scale, i.e. that the Earth is about 4 billion years old, and the Big Bang from its science curriculum. So, for many people, this is the sort of relationship they fathom between science and religion. A relationship of antagonism, with science taking jabs at religion and religion taking jabs at science. However, we as Muslims are in a position to see things very differently. So, while you think about that, take a look at this picture, and we'll come back to it. I'm sure you sense some motion going on here. There isn't any, of course. It's a still photograph. It's not a video. And we'll talk about that. We as Muslims perceive that science and religion are not antagonistic. They are both expressions of the truth. People who feel that they're not antagonistic will often say, yes, yeah, there is a compromise between science and religion. They operate in different spheres, so they don't need to conflict. Science deals with the material world, religion deals with the spiritual world, and those two worlds don't intersect. And so, yes, it is possible to be a religious person and a scientist or scientifically minded person. We as Muslims actually see that those two things do intersect, that there is an intersection between science and spirituality, and that science can truly enhance our spiritual experience. One main lesson that we will come to appreciate is that science teaches us that what seems to be real often is not. It is but a surface illusion. And in fact, physicist Brian Greene has said that the overarching lesson that has emerged from scientific inquiry over the last century is that human experience is often a misleading guide to the true nature of reality. Lying just beneath the surface of the everyday is a world we would hardly recognize. And that is certainly true. People who have not learned that lesson can't see beneath the surface. They can't see beyond the illusion. So, just like the previous optical illusion I showed you, here's another light mental detour. In this illusion, it would seem obvious that there are black dots dancing between the white dots, 
but that's not true. There are simply black squares, gray lines, and white dots. And so what seems so obvious on the surface is in fact not the case. Of course, these are just simple, almost ridiculous, silly illusions, but I think they make the point that those who do not learn the lesson of science, that beneath the quote-unquote obvious reality, there is a much deeper reality, they react like the unbelievers described in Surah Al-Mu'minun, قَالُوا أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا وَعِظَامًا أَإِنَّا لَمَبْعُثُونَ They say, what? When we die and become dust and bones, could we really be raised up again? Why do they say that? Because it seems obvious that when we die and turn to dust, it's done. However, one of the benefits of learning the overarching lesson of science that Brian Greene noted is that we as Muslims are very willing to see that beneath what seems to be an obvious surface reality, there's a much bigger, true, more profound inner reality. And with that, we are able to enhance our spiritual experience. So I hope that you find this series interesting, educational, rewarding, and dare I say, a little bit fun, inshallah. Thank you and salam alaykum.